The Art of Patience. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to The Hopefulist. Thank you so much for joining me for your daily dose of inspiration and positivity. The quote of the day, a Chinese proverb. One moment of patience may ward off great disaster. One moment of impatience may ruin a whole life. So true. Mostly, when I think of patience, I think of taking my time, thinking of how I rush through life. Because when you're rushing through life, you just miss so much. You don't take the time to look at what's around you, smell what's all around you. Just take it all in. I know we're busy, but we need to take time for these things. It's what makes life truly joyous. Joyous. That's right. Got it on the second time around. So I've been doing some shopping. I'm putting together the Hopefulest gift box that I was mentioning yesterday, and I got a lot of really cool, fun stuff for it. I will be posting a picture soon with all the particulars and pricing and such, so I hope that it's something that you would be interested. I have a limited amount that will be available, a nice little gift for yourself or a nice little gift for someone on your Christmas list. So I was out and about yesterday and I did try to really take my time. I gave myself the time to just let it take as long as it took. Because, you know, the stores are busy. I don't care what anybody says. The lines are long. I went to Target yesterday and I didn't have to wait in line. I went right up to the self-checkout, which I, I typically take advantage of the self-checkout because I just would rather not wait if I don't have to. And that way I can make sure that it's ringing up properly too because I'm one of those people who I watch the register like a hawk when they're <laughs> ringing me up, making sure that all the prices are correct. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of times, especially at the grocery store, they are not ringing them up properly. The wrong prices come up. So then you can stop them right there and say, wait, wait, wait. That's supposed to be two for one today. That kind of thing. So I can make sure that everything's ringing up the way that it is supposed to be when I'm doing the self-checkout. Then I went to Michael's to get some things. And I was really kind of shocked at how there wasn't really anybody in line. So I go walking up, and then I see somebody kind of off to the side a little bit. I'm like, well, is she in line, or is this the end of the line? And then I looked a little bit past, because they typically have the main aisle that goes up to the register. And for some reason, they kind of swooped it off to around another aisle. So as I'm seeing this woman that seemed a little off kilter to me, standing in line, I didn't see anybody else behind her. But when I looked around a little bit, I saw there was about eight people behind her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So I turn around and I start walking toward the, line, the end of the line. And I'm looking at all these people looking at me. And I bet they were all thinking, did she think she was just going to walk up and walk right to the register? Because I was ready to fight her. That's what they were, they were all looking at me like that. I was just like, I didn't know. I didn't know. So... What they did at Michael's, which was kind of interesting uh, interesting, and did make it go a little bit faster, was they had a woman about halfway through the line that was ringing everybody up and bagging their items. 
So then when you got to the register, you just handed them the card that she gave you with the total of your purchases. Because that's the other thing. And, and specifically at Michael's, they have those shields now in front of them. And it takes up the entire desk area where you would put your purchases. And so you're kind of like, it's really silly. Because you can't put anything down. You just have to kind of hand it to them one by one. And it's ridiculous, honestly. So I guess they figured out a way to get around that. So that was that was pretty good. But I just allowed myself to take as long as it would take. You know, because I went to Target. I went to Michael's. And I went to the dollar store. The dollar store is always insane, which oddly yesterday, it was the least busy I've ever seen it. So um, just, you know, put your patience pants on when you're going out to do some shopping because if you don't, you're just going to be frustrated. That I can guarantee you. Talking about peppermint today. Do you like candy canes? Do you like peppermint fudge? I make peppermint fudge every year. I don't, I don't think it's as popular as it used to be. People used to rant and rave about it, and now I think there's maybe only one person who says that they look forward to it every year. Um, and I'm not even sure I'm going to see that person this year. So maybe, maybe I will deduct that from the homemade goodies that I make every year. You know, I think that the um, the main event is the uh, the main the main event is typically the Chex Mix. People love the Chex Mix, so. That is typically what I include the most when it comes to this type of thing. My homemade treats. Joe has been making some homemade cookies as well. So when it comes to whether you like peppermint or not, predominantly people that answered like peppermint. They do like peppermint. And there's a couple that said n no. In fact, Diane said, no way, not a fan at all, and then a little throw-up face. <laughs> now, Megan said peppermint patties. Yes, I am a fan of the peppermint patty. They used to be my go-to candy. I don't really eat them as much as I used to. So I asked Megan, so no candy canes or peppermint martinis? I used to have a little gathering every year around Christmas time, and the one year I perfected the peppermint martini, and it took me a long time to get it down because I used peppermint schnapps, and it really, if you use too much schnapps, it gives it a little bit of a bitter aftertaste. So I had to find like the perfect proportions for the vodka and the peppermint and all of that. Now with the peppermint bark rum chata, they will be amazing. So maybe I'll have to just make a couple of those for the neighbors or something one day. During this holiday season. Lisa says, I love peppermint, candy, body wash, shampoo, air freshener, love it all. I had gotten a peppermint scented candle one year from Bath and Body Works. And that bad boy was so strong. I swear I smelled peppermint for six months. <laughs> it kind of turned me off of the peppermint candle a little bit because it was so overpowering. You know, Sometimes it's just a little too much. Yeah, that was a lot too much. And I am not even exaggerating when I say <laughs> I literally smelled it for months. I think it got embedded in the curtains and the walls and the furniture. It was insane. On to the do uh, blog post for today. I'm having trouble speaking this morning for some reason, so I do apologize for that. No more rushing. Maybe then I wouldn't speak so uh, improperly if I stopped rushing my words. Stop the madness. Take the time to stop and smell the Merry Christmas wreath. That's right. I posted a picture of my real Christmas wreath that I got at the local shop right with a bow that matches my bows on my tree uh, pretty much identically. A little bit different coloring of the actual ribbon, but it's got the red snowflakes on it, which I just love. 
and I take a big whiff every time I pass it by because it's the only live green I have in the house, and I know it won't be around forever, so I have to make the time for it now. We are always rushing, I know, rushing from one place to another, from one task to another, from one meal to another. It's a vicious cycle that is really hard to break. But if we can figure out a way to slow down and take in the world around us a little bit more, we will enjoy life so much more. How do we do that, you ask? Well, I will tell you, and I will tell you you won't like the first answer. Stop hitting The snooze button. I truly believe this is the first step to getting your life under control. You go to bed with a plan. You plan to get up at a certain time. That leaves you plenty of time to get ready, have breakfast, do your gratitude practice, enjoy some quiet time before the madness of the day takes over. But what actually happens? The alarm goes off and you hit the snooze button, putting you behind schedule before you even get out of bed. How many times do you hit it? If you build in the time to hit the snooze button, then change the time to you actually plan to get up. First thing in the morning is not the time to be making schedule altering decisions. Pick a time and stick to it because even though you build in, say, two snooze into your timing, sometimes you hit a third and a fourth. I know you do. I know you do. So pick a time. Get up when the alarm goes off. Trust me. You will thank me once you get out of this horrible habit. I know you think it feels good. I know you love the feeling when the alarm goes off. And you're like, ah, I've got eight more minutes. I know you love that feeling. You know what you will love even more? Being on time. Having the time to do everything that you want to do. The ability to relax a little bit first thing in the morning. Stop the rushing around because you're behind schedule first thing. You will know what time you are getting up and actually stick to your schedule. It will be amazing. Playing your day so you don't have a million things to do at once. If you have to run the kids all over after school, then you can't stay late at the office. Or if you have to stay late at the office, see if you can get someone to pick the kids up at practice. But I beg of you to stop thinking you can do it all. You can't, nor should you. It just makes you crazy. Learn to say no. It's so hard at first, but so, so freeing. Get your life back. Once you stop over-scheduling your life, you can stop rushing so much. I tend to rush all the time. Whether I'm somewhere I have to be or not. I don't know why. It's just my nature. I race to get home. I race to get in and out of stores as quickly as possible. I rush to drive. It's awful. I'm missing out on so much. Stop hitting the snooze button so you can enjoy, enjoy your drive to work. Looking at Christmas lights and decorations instead of panicking because you are late. Go to the store when you have time to browse and wander around so you can find everything you are looking for and even more. Realize that well, home will be there waiting for you when you get there, no matter what time it is. We miss out on so much of everyday joys because we rush right past them. Look forward to the drive in the car. Listen to Christmas music. Turn on the seat warmers. Oh, I hope you have those. They are the bomb. Have a warm cup of coffee or beverage of your choice to enjoy while you drive. It could be such a nice experience if we allow it to be. We tend to be even busier at this time of year because we have so much more to do. But it's also the time of year to stop and enjoy all there is to see and smell. It's certainly the most beautiful time of the year. I think we can all agree on that. So don't waste it by rushing past it. Soon it will be January and everything will be bare and in a deep winter sleep. That is so depressing. (laughs) So don't miss this wonderful time. Take your time. Make sure to enjoy all that is around you. That is what it's there for. 
People put all this stuff up for people to enjoy. If you walk into an office building lobby every day that has a massive tree and gorgeous decorations, stop to enjoy them. That is why they are there. Pretend to yourself that they put those up just so you personally could enjoy them. So don't have them waste their time. Take it all in. You know those times that you go out specifically to look at Christmas lights and enjoy the sights and sounds of the seasons? Do that on some level every day. You obviously can't make a day out of it if you're heading to work, but give yourself some time to enjoy the, all that is around. This is my wish for you. It's hump day, people. Where are your favorite decorations? Make sure to stop and stare at them for a moment today. Feel appreciation for them. It's going to make life so much better. Now go on out there and be badass. You know, I'm always cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. La 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 la.